If the thought of not being liked by other people or by being rejected by others is something you have ever worried about, this episode is for you. This week, we're going to talk about rejection and how you're going to bounce back from it every single time. Welcome to How to Be a Dangerous Woman, a place where we dive deep into breaking down into what makes amazing women, just like you, think, feel, and perform at levels beyond what you thought was possible. This is a place where women learn what it truly feels like to have it all without guilt, without imposter syndrome, and without overwhelm getting in the way. I'm Dr. Crystal Connor, and together we're going to explore the health mindsets and strategies that distinguish the world's top performing women. And you're going to walk away with the exact tools that you need to build and create a life on your own terms. Hi there, friends. When was the last time you felt rejected? Was it from your partner, a friend, a potential client, or maybe you felt rejected at work? Maybe the thought of rejection immediately brings up memories of being picked last in PE to be on teams. Whenever it was, whether you labeled it as rejection or not, rejection is very common and I think it's one of a lot of people's biggest fears. Rejection is defined as the act of pushing someone or something away. When we're rejected, we feel oftentimes as if we're not good enough somehow. We question ourselves and wonder what we might need to change about ourselves in order to be accepted. It actually feels painful to be rejected. And not just in a dramatic way, researchers at Duke University actually found scientific evidence through MRIs that the pain of rejection fires off the same pain signals as you would feel if you stubbed your toe. Now, if you've ever stubbed your toe, walk into the bathroom at 3 a.m. or on the edge of a coffee table, you know exactly what this feels like. It is actually quite painful. So it makes sense that we would all want to avoid feeling that, right? I mean, none of us is going to on purpose seek out stubbing our toe any more than we set out to potentially get rejected. The problem, though, is when you desperately seek to avoid rejection at all costs at the cost of showing up in the world in the way that your heart is begging you to do, doing the things that you are, that that are deeply ingrained into your dreams to do. What happens is you spend all of this time trying to figure out how to be accepted or how to stay under the radar in order to not feel the discomfort of rejection, which is all well and good. Don't get me wrong. It's all good if you want to live a life that never requires you to step outside of the shadows. But we both know that that's not you. You're a dangerous woman. And so being in the background, that's not an option for you. Rejection sucks. It hurts. It's painful to feel like you aren't accepted. It's our human nature to want to belong, to be in community. So when we feel like there's a threat to that, we naturally want to retreat. We naturally want to avoid any opportunity to be cast out, to be cast away. So let's talk about some ways you can rebound from rejection because it's not an option for you to play small anymore. You gave that up already. So now I want to equip you with the ability to be able to experience rejection, to fully feel the pain of it and get back up even stronger. I bet if you thought back over your life, you could recall a time where you were rejected and in that moment you felt destroyed. You felt devastated. But as you look back now, you're thanking God that you were rejected because you see how things could have turned out. You see how things actually turned out even better than you thought it would because of the rejection. Like being rejected for a job opportunity, then seeing that the company would have actually been terrible to work for. And maybe because you weren't hired at that company, you ended up being available for the job of your dreams. Or maybe not being hired pushed you to finally start your own business. It could be seeing that ex that rejected you and thanking God that he did because you would have been miserable. 
or you wouldn't have met your partner that you adore. Or maybe you didn't get into, into the college that you wanted to, but you couldn't imagine having had a better experience or making better lifelong friends than you did at the college that you ended up going to. Rejection can be very painful in the moment, but it can also be a really great step towards something even more amazing. And what would it feel like if you just decided that was always the case? What if you decided that all things work together for your good? Always. I believe that. What if you just tried on believing that even when it looks like things aren't working for you, you just believe you have the faith that eventually it will make sense. It's going to be clear. You're going to see why this rejection had to happen. That doesn't mean that in that moment it's not going to hurt, but it means that there is something to be learned from the situation. There's something that you needed in order to get to something better. So let's look at a couple of things I want you to consider the next time you're feeling rejected. First of all, let me be clear, not all rejection is a learning opportunity. Some of it is not even going to be worth your time. So the first thing I want you to do when you're rejected is to consider the source. Really think about if there is a meaningful lesson in the rejection, meaning that it can actually contribute to your growth. I think all rejection is an amazing opportunity to really look at yourself, but not all rejection is a reason to try and change yourself. Rude comments from trolls on social media would be a great example of rejection not worth your time. When someone says something to you with absolutely no basis and is intentionally being cruel or hateful, that is not a sign that you need to take in all of the hate or that you need to change something about yourself. An example of when you might want to address the cause of the rejection is if you get rejected and you're not offered your dream job. That is a great opportunity not to look at everything that is wrong with you, but for you to look at what ways you can improve and be better positioned for the next opportunity. If you get caught in dismissing every rejection and every person who rejects you as a hater, you're going to miss out on some really, really great growth opportunities for you. Everyone who doesn't agree with you, friend, everyone who's not cheering you on, that doesn't necessarily make them a hater. It means that people are allowed to have a difference of opinion. And also it means that you don't have to adjust or alter yourself because of their different opinion. The second thing I want you to do is to be very kind, gentle, and loving to yourself. So often we use rejection as an opportunity to really beat ourselves up, to demonize ourselves for not measuring up. But when you do this, you cannot be objective enough to create a plan of action moving forward to actually grow. You get stuck in the wrongness and pointing out every single thing that is wrong with you, all of the flaws. But I want you to think about how focusing on those things, on thoughts about what's wrong with you, meditating on them, I want you to think about how that's going to make you feel. If you sit around all day long ruminating on your flaws, you're going to feel crappy. This matters because every single action you take is going to be driven from your feelings. Think about the last time you felt bad about yourself. What did you do? I bet it wasn't something that was helping you grow in any type of positive way. Being kind and gentle does not mean denying areas and, and ways where you could actually make improvements in your life. It means not vilifying yourself in the process of that. You could simply remind yourself of all the times where you weren't rejected or times where you were rejected and you made the best of it. Maybe you even created a better situation for yourself because of it. Spending time thinking of this is going to give you the confidence you need to make any beneficial changes that will actually help you grow in your life. The last thing I want you to do is to do a reality check. I want you to just be real with yourself. Rejection is a part of life. You can expect that it's going to happen to you whether you play small or whether you show up fully 100% you. 
You can't control that. The only thing you can control is how you respond to it and learn from it. And since rejection is going to happen to you no matter what, no matter what you do in your life, wouldn't you rather face being rejected from having gone in 100% on being you, on fulfilling your biggest dreams and achieving your biggest goals? I mean, let's be real. If, if you're going to suffer, if you're going to feel the pain of rejection, you may as well suffer for something that actually means you get to live the life you were created for. Who wants to suffer for something mediocre or less than? The worst thing that happens when you're rejected is that you will feel a feeling, a crappy feeling, but just a feeling nonetheless. And you are well equipped to feel any feeling. You felt them all before. You've been embarrassed, disappointed. You've been sad and angry. You felt rejected before. You're able to experience all of those feelings without reacting in an uncontrolled way. You're able to experience the full range of your emotions and create an amazing life when you do the work to manage your thoughts and your emotions. When you don't leave other people in charge of your feelings, you can do this work. And think about it. If you knew rejection was still going to feel painful, no matter what you did, and you made the decision that you could still handle whatever feelings it brought up, what would you be doing in your life right now? What would you stop avoiding if you didn't fear feeling a feeling? That's a lot of questions, I know. But I really want you to take the time to answer them Take the time to reflect on situations from your past that you still feel the pain of the rejection from and see how you can use that as fuel. We learned last week about repurposing your past. This is a really great opportunity for you to revisit that episode and find meaning in past rejection so that it can move you forward instead of keeping you in your own holding cell. Ask yourself this and answer it. In what ways was being rejected the best thing that could have ever happened to me? All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I am so proud of the work that you're doing. I've heard from so many of you about how doing this work is challenging you, but it's also building this confidence in who you are. My friend, Miss Primo said, I'm happy I caught this journey podcast when I did. I'll be sharing and doing the homework from my new friend. Thank you so much, Ms. Primo. Thank you for listening. Thank you all for listening. You know, you can be our friend too. This is a no woman left behind mission here. So I want you to make sure that you're subscribed, but also make sure you're sharing this with your girlfriends. We have friends all, and I do mean all, all around the world in 22 different countries and we're doing this work together so don't gatekeep girlfriend make sure you share this with your friends thank you so much for listening and do your homework i hope you have an amazing week god bless you and see you next monday if you found today's episode helpful go ahead and hit that subscribe button and subscribe to this channel so you never miss an episode and i'd really love to hear how you're doing you can find me at Dr. Crystal Connor on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I can't wait to hear what progress you've made. So until next week, see ya.